Welcome to Late Edition. The world is tonight applauding the month nearing triumph of a New Zealander and a Nepalese Sherpa. Fifty years ago today, Sir Edmund Hillary and his climbing partner, Tenzing Norgay, conquered Mount Everest. Tenzing Norgay died 17 years ago, but Sir Edmund has been in Nepal, taking part in a week of parades, exhibitions and parties, and the festivities are about to reach their climax. These are the latest pictures from the capital, Kathmandu, where Sir Edmund is due to be presented with honorary citizenship of Nepal. Earlier, he was presented with a special Mountaineers medal by Nepal's Crown Prince, Paris Shah. Massive crowds and relentless media attention have proven a strain, but Sir Edmund appeared fit and strong as he recalled those historical final moments. Up to the right was a rounded, snowy bump, I chip step up that, attending, following close behind, and finally we stood on top of the world. Nepal's Prime Minister will shortly present Sir Edmund with his honorary citizenship before a royal banquet in his honour, hosted by King Gyanendra. And Sir Edmund has seized on all the world attention to make a public plea to give Everest a break. He's worried about its future and wants the Nepalese government to limit the number allowed to climb the mountain. He says its magic is being lost to commercialism and beer-drinking crowds. So sitting around in a big base camp and knocking back uh, cans of beer, I don't particularly regard as mountaineering. Since Sir Edmund's ascent, more than 1,300 climbers have made it to the summit, and there are currently more than 20 guided teams waiting at base camp. It's been announced tonight that the New Zealand government is to boost its contribution to Sir Edmund's Himalayan Trust. It'll jump from about $40,000 to $290,000 a year. The new funding will be used for ongoing health and education initiatives in Nepal. Events marking the Everest anniversary have been held all over New Zealand today. In the North Island, a new portrait of Sir Edmund was unveiled in the Auckland War Memorial Museum. The painting by Australian artist Lewis Miller was commissioned by the Auckland City Council as a commemorative gift, and it'll hang alongside a portrait created 50 years ago. That, you know, you see this very big man in a very small portrait. Um, you get a sense of this huge life. Other New Zealanders found their own Everest to conquer. The Prime Minister found hers on top of Mount Maunganui in Tauranga. And celebrations in the South had special significance for the family who ensured Sir Edmund had a warm night's sleep all the way to the top of Everest. In 1953, Murray Ellis's father gave him a goose down sleeping bag, helping to make the Ellis name and their fairy down brand world famous. It, it was a uh, special sleeping bag and even Ed recognize, uh, acknowledges that it was, did him, uh, kept him warm. Across the South Island, dozens of events celebrated Sir Edmund. Mountain peaks sprang up on the pavement in Christchurch. Timaru's piazza served as a makeshift summit. And in Dunedin, they braved the rain in honour of the Everest conqueror. But one other New Zealand commemoration is causing concern tonight. There's still no word from a climbing party trying to scale Aurangi or rather Aurangi Mount Cook to mark the Everest anniversary. The four climbers are thought to be trapped in bad weather and there's been no contact with them since they set out yesterday. Lisa Simpson reports. Aoraki Mount Cook, a mountain of great beauty. But today the weather turned ugly on Ed Hillary's old stomping ground. A climb to the summit was planned to mark the anniversary, but tonight dock staff are still waiting to hear from the four experienced climbers. A lot of them out and they can't, they couldn't contact us if they, they wanted. I think it's probably clear that they perhaps aren't in the hat, in the hut, in Plato hut and they'll probably be somewhere uh, hankering down. They set out yesterday in near-perfect conditions. Every step part of an emotional journey. This is a good opportunity to me to climb on, on that day, on 29th of May, which is make me feel at like home and very special for the Southern and Hillary and Tenjing Norge. They carry a special charm, $5 notes, some autographed. Like well, I take out beer and take a pictures. <laughs> and show to Sir Edmund Hillary when he gets back to New Zealand. The arrival of Sir Edmund Hillary's statue at Mount Cook Village today, perhaps a good omen for his fellow climbers, weathering the conditions near the top. And they may be stuck near the top until the weekend, as rescuers predict the rough weather won't improve until then. Lisa Simpson, One News. In other news, two Qantas flight attendants are nursing gashes after a mid-air attack over Australia. They were injured trying to stop an armed man attempting to reach the cockpit on a domestic flight. Officials say the attack seems to have been premeditated. 
but they don't believe it's linked to terrorism. More from the ABC. We apologise, we seem to have lost those pictures. Now, despite criticism at home and abroad, Foreign Minister Phil Goff has gone ahead with a controversial meeting in the Middle East. He's just met Palestinian President Yasser Arafat and other Palestinian officials in Ramallah. Israeli officials have condemned the visit as unhelpful to the peace process. They want foreign governments to deal instead with Mr. Arafat's newly chosen Prime Minister Mahmoud Abbas. And opposition MPs in New Zealand have labelled it a diplomatic blunder. Now here's Karen with a look at your Friday weather. What's with this wild and windy weather expected? Where's it all coming from? Well, Neil, the gradient's tightening up in the south as the front moves in. We've got warnings out tonight and tomorrow for coastal Southland and Stewart Island. We're expecting west to southwest gales with gusts to 120 kilometres an hour. So it'll be quite gusty also in inland areas in the south. We've got rain here in the west, easing to showers in the afternoon. Just scattered falls getting over into... Southland and Otago. Up to the North Island, cloudy in the north and west with occasional showers mixed in. Fine with high cloud in the east and uh, south, but the westerly will be quite strong and gusty in places, especially northern Wairarapa and southern Hawke's Bay, where gusts could reach 120k at times. So gusty westerly in the south, it'll be gale force in Invercargill with the rain there easing to showers. Scattered rain clears in Dunedin. Showers and a fresh southwester for coasters. Just some high cloud out east, but the westerly will be uh, blustery. Mostly fine from Blenheim to Masterton. This cloud here is just high stuff. Strong, gusty nor'wester for Wellington. Cloudy periods through here with a few showers north of about Kapiti, uh, near gale force westerly for Palmerston North. Strong winds for this group. Showers for New Plymouth. And Topol gets a few splashes as well. Cloudy skies with occasional showers for Hamilton and Tokoroa, fine in Rotorua and Fakatani, but it's windy, and it'll be windy in the north too. We've got sunshine for Tauranga, but a few showers further north. Well, that's all for me tonight. Now back to Neil. Thanks, Karen. Now returning to our earlier story, two Qantas flight attendants are nursing gashes after a mid-air attack over Australia. They were injured trying to stop an armed man attempting to reach the cockpit on a domestic flight. Officials say the attack seems to have been, or seems to have been premeditated, but they don't believe it's linked to terrorism. Here's more from the ABC. The two Qantas staff suffered lacerations to the face and head. They'd been working on flight 1737 from Melbourne to Launceston in northern Tasmania when a passenger tried to enter the cockpit, apparently threatening to crash the plane. He was armed with two 15 centimetre sharpened wooden stakes. Four or five passengers, he was one of them that actually overpowered the person on the plane. And you see him as a, as a hero? Oh, very much so. <laughs> the flight attendants were stabbed with the wooden implements, one in the back of the neck, the other in the face. The, the steward had a big, a lot of blood on his back, from his neck. Passengers were also injured when they stepped in to help restrain the man in his 40s, who'd been sitting in the seventh row. We believe he was trying to take over the plane. That's all I can say at this stage. The plane turned back to Melbourne immediately after the incident and staff and passengers are now being counselled. The injured flight attendants, a 38-year-old man and a 25-year-old woman, are now in a serious but stable condition in the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Two passengers were treated at the scene. Qantas says the safety of the aircraft was never threatened but is refusing to rule out that this was an attempted hijacking. I think I'll leave that to the authorities, but obviously it's a very, very serious uh, incident for us. The federal government says it'll wait for further details before reviewing air security. Although it looks as though it was premeditated, it doesn't appear to have been an act of terrorism. A man in his 40s is in police custody tonight. Police say charges will be laid. And that's late edition for this Thursday. Join us again tomorrow night. I'm Neil Walker. Good night.